Uh, a Swiss tournament works a little bit differently than arena tournaments, which I usually play. Uh, Swiss is basically the same format as Title Tuesday. So with every round, we wait for all the games to finish before the next round begins. I see some familiar names. Obese Reese, seated number nine. Wow, 37 players now. I feel like this is turning into a viewer tournament. I just crashed like the official <laughs> Lee Chess Rapid Increment tournament, but it'll be fun. Okay, first game, playing Misha Lover, 27. I'll play e4. And if e5, I've, I've promised that I would try to go for an Italian. So we'll see if that comes to be. But we have a Sicilian. So against Sicilian, I'll play knight c3. I'll stick with my usual repertoire. Maybe going for Grand Prix attack. I don't think this is officially Grand Prix attack. Like f4 is usually the, the mainstream Grand Prix. But this can be a tricky sideline. The main move here is knight d4. If g6, then I, I take and then go for a Grand Prix setup. We see knight d4. Now the move I used to play was bishop c4, but more recently I've been playing knight to f3, which does give black the option of taking, but um, yeah, I've, I've learned to not mind the lines where black takes because black will have moved the knight three times just to trade it off. Pawn a6. With pawn a6, bishop d3 is a move. Because bishop c4 allows b5. And the goal is to now take. Yeah, I think I'll take and then play knight d2. It does look awkward with the bishop here. But the goal is now to play c3. And in the event of takes, I take back. And then, then my bishop is actually very reasonable on d3. So this bishop is no longer blocked. Black is playing very solidly. We're still getting like a, a pretty typical Sicilian structure. Some kind of like dragon setup, or dragon dwarf with a6 included. Let's go for let's go for h3. The idea of h3 is to prepare this and not have to worry about this. Welcome to more people. This is the first game of the stream. Uh, queen b3 comes to mind. But then knight d7 defends the b6 pawn. I'm actually considering playing c4 here. Like c4 to get the knight to c3. But in so many cases, the knight's going like, to maneuver to d7 and then Put some pressure, but maybe that's okay. Yeah, let's go for c4. Uh, this is what we call a Marazzi bind setup with pawns on c4 and e4, controlling more space, and d5 as well within my control. And the plan is just to like get the rooks to decent central squares. This bishop is not the best piece. So there are cases where if black maneuvers, maneuvers a knight to c5 or e5, I'll just allow the knight to take the bishop. I imagine we'll see something like rook c8 or knight d7. Doesn't one normally put the knight on d4 for the Marazzi? Yeah, there's Marazzi type positions where all the minor pieces are still on the board. And like you, you'd have this setup with a knight on d4, and then black would have a knight somewhere. So this is a little bit different. Queen e2 makes sense. And now I'm debating between f4. Or F3. F4 
four seems a bit more adventurous, like provoking black to take. I am conceding the bishop here. But I'm also conceding my worst piece in the position. Opponent's playing very solidly so far. Like objectively, I probably don't have much of an edge. But I really shouldn't be worse here. Now, if I play b3, there is this move b5 and then knight d5. I think that's okay. I mean, b5 is a very typical pawn break for this structure. Try and create some weakness in my solid pawns. But yeah, b5, knight d5. I mean, we could end up trading a lot, but then I'll get a nice like center space, space advantage with the pawns. I mean, knight d5 might come anyway, too. Oh, yeah, my my former lights for bishop was a super pawn. Basically playing the role of a pawn. Okay. Not sure if I understand that move. I'm also not sure if I understand what I'm supposed to be doing here. Like knight d5 probably forces a trades. I want to play rook c2, but then b5. Maybe it's okay. I also have rook f2. B5, knight d5. Take. Oh, take and I have rook takes. Yeah, I'm leaning towards rook f2 here. I didn't play rook c2 because I want my c rook defended by the bishop. Okay, so this is Black's idea. I guess Black is now threatening to take and then take. Oh, wow. How do I defend? A bishop d4, I guess. I mean, there's not really too many moves. Bishop d4 does the job. Like, pretty solid positional game so far. Yeah, this didn't even cross my mind. Like, it probably should have in black play bishop a8. It's weird to have the queen lead the battery. Now we could trade and then like knight d5 hitting the rook and then f5. I think now I'm relying a bit on intuition. But knight d5 hits a rook, also pressures these pawns. Maybe sets up queen d4 to win this pawn. But f5 also looks super appealing. It's a question, do I go for material or do I go for the kingside attack? I think I just go for the kingside attack. Like, this setup is now really awkward for black. And I still have queen d4 if I want it. But I'm also threatening f6. And if I get an f6, takes, takes, knight defends, attacks, and then queen d4 will be... Pretty lethal there. And this is a point where black is probably missing their dark square bishop. Even though I don't have my own dark square bishop, it's the dark squares that are going to be very exploitable. If the queen wasn't on b7, I think black would love to take and try and simplify. But now, f6. And queen can start invading. I'm attacking the pawn. 
Not sure if I'm going to be mating like so quickly, though. I would actually like it if my pawn was back here to set up the rook lift. But queen h6 doesn't seem to do that much. I mean, I have knight e7, I guess, if I want it. Yeah, I think here I should just like play. Play in some principled fashion. Like take the pawn and probably win in the end game. Eric. Hello. Some other guy. Oh, that was uh that was LW. I saw the comment below the sub from some other guy. Thank you, LW, subbing for six months. Okay, so we're trading. I won a pawn. But the position has changed character. Like I'm not not close to mating anymore. But I do have a pretty solid like structure overall. I do have to watch out for this threat. So I guess rook c2. Because the plan is probably to bring the king in. Maybe. I don't think I need to include that though. I was going to say bring the king in and then get in b4 and c5. Looks quite nice. Yeah, if a5, I think I'd go for the a3, b4 push. Okay. Not sure if that was a mouse slip or maybe a, a brain freeze or something, but there we go. Uh, first game. I mean, I think Black played like very, very solidly in the opening and early middle game. And I didn't really have a clear edge until until maybe around here. Like this was somewhat of the turning point. And Engine does like white a little bit, but after Rook C7, I tried a couple staff it was very pleasant. Stream and got destroyed. Oh no. I didn't follow the line correctly. Oh no. Miss you all. Happy wins, hopefully. I miss you too. Hope you're doing well, Zippy. Oh, thanks for sharing. Happy three years. Let me uh, just see the, the tournament situation. So there's seven games ongoing. We do have a little bit of chill time before the next game begins. Hey, it's Nate Brady. Twitch baby anniversary. Happy nine months. Shout out to Nate. Hope you're doing well. Nate's been streaming a good amount too. Has some nice uh nice effects on his stream. A lot of like cool I don't know what you call them, cool coding extensions. So there's 85 players in this tournament. I think it's still possible to join. Like for those that late join, you might get a a zero for the first round or a half point buy. I'm not sure how exactly it works. Thank you, Merlin. Happy 16 months. Wait, where is my game? Here's a game. So I can check. I made three mistakes this game. But the mistakes were only after I got the winning position, apparently. Ah, because like I could have played B4 a bit sooner. And inaccuracies. Oh, Bishop D4 was my first inaccuracy. I was happy with this move when I played it. Engine much prefers this, which I didn't play because E6. Ah, E6 I can take on B6, though. I was just scared about my pawn hanging. So I, I didn't quite realize that I'm counterattacking the rook and bishop, and yeah, black has no time to win the E4 pawn. How is 7 plus 2 rapid, but 5 plus 3 blitz? 
Yeah, it's one of those like cutoff points. It might be kind of arbitrary, but yeah, seven plus two probably feels a bit more like rapid. I'm not sure the exact formula for differentiating. At some point, lines have to be drawn. What is 9-0? Is 9-0 Blitz or Rabbit? <laughs> anyway, board game's ongoing. Let's try and find the most interesting position. This looks interesting. Guayacan against Adam SR. Ooh, Adam's up a pawn. But Guayacan's up a rook. <laughs> Didn't see the rook on f8. But six seconds left. Black has to live on increment. It's rapid if the numbers add up to 10. So maybe 7 plus 2 is some exception. Wow. Adam with the um, Adam with the upset gaining 133 points. Yeah, time management is important in this tournament. We got sad rabbit with a sad position. Oh, we got Emberg too. Emberg putting up a good fight against a, a 1900 plus opponent. It was also. Wait, Emberg won! Emberg won this! Wow! I was going back to like see the opening. Black played F3. Never play F3. What a finish. Oh, that's feel bad for the opponents, but yeah, it goes to show even late in the ending end game, if you're if it looks like you're winning, you still have to be careful. Well done, good fight. I see it was a uh what we call like Greco Greco attack, molar attack. Welcome back, sixteenth century man. Okay, so all the games are done. Next round starting soon. I might play Emberg next round. <laughs> but a lot of people with one point. Stephen Willie late joined. Okay, playing Axe V Loves Chess. Good luck to my opponent. And let's play... Let's play a Sicilian. I'm mixing things up a little bit. E6. I guess I'm mixing things up away from my Stafford Gambit repertoire. But this is my more like serious tournament repertoire. Playing a Taimana. Which is probably the, the Sicilian variation I know best. Knight takes e6 is playable, but it does help um, help black kind of improve the center. Either d5 or knight f6 here. I think I'll start with knight f6. d5 coming very soon. Armanov looks so weird with big holes for black. Yeah, the holes aren't like so troublesome, at least in most most cases. As long as black has a dark square bishop, it kind of fills in the holes. Because it is true that usually in Taimanov, the pawns are on light squares. Okay, white going for all the trades. I'll, I'll allow this. I don't mind uh, having bishop versus knight. Do you feel like Eric Rosen? Sometimes. Most of the time. Most of the times I feel like, feel like myself. I 
I'm playing an opening that Eric Rosen would play. Okay, so rook b8 and rook c8. These are the two half open files for me. Might as well start with rook b8. Yeah, we're seeing a position where it's equal material, but there are imbalances in, first of all, the structure. I have two center pawns, white has zero. And then also the kind of the placement of the pieces. My rooks are going to be more powerful early on, I think. Yeah, with rook c8. These pawns are looking tasty. Oh, Sad Rabbit says, I think I have a buy this round. Yeah, if there's an odd number of players in a Swiss tournament, then the lowest ranked player does get a buy, which means you don't get an opponent, but you do get like a full point, and then you won't get a buy for future rounds. So A3. With a3, it's tempting to take, because this pawn is overworked. But I don't know if I want to subject myself to bishop takes and then queen check. Yeah, it looks like there's too many ways that could kind of go wrong. I think I'd rather just make Luft h6, kick the bishop, and then decide what to do later. Bishop f4. I'll play rook b7. So keeping the rook here. Now I'm probably happier to take. Because if takes, then I take the knight. Queen defends a rook. There's also ideas of rook c4, just activating and attacking the bishop. Okay, white plays a useful move. Reinforcing the knight, so bishop a3 no longer is really a move. And d4 is a consideration. I still kind of like rook c4, though. I don't think it immediately threatens anything. It just improves the rook. And there's ideas very soon of playing queen c6, creating the battery. And then ideally, I'd like to get in queen c6 and d4. And the knight will be restricted by the queen, also pinned to the pawn due to the, uh, the queen rook battery. And it's not easy for white to like find so much activity here. Although that's probably a useful move. Like now if I go for this b3 doesn't hang the knight. Considering knight g4, which looks interesting. I simply kick the bishop. Might as well go for it. The knight's defended by the rook. Some interesting harmony here. F2 could be a target. Like maybe bishop c5 coming. Or even bishop g5. And if h3, then maybe I take, take, and bishop f6. I'm trying to maximize the pressure against white. Which age did you become the I am title? Um, I got my I am title in 2015. I guess I was 20. I think I, I clinched like all the requirements at 21. But I don't think my title was confirmed until I was 22. It's like once you got all the norms and rating, it still has to be approved at the, the FIDE Congress. Thank you, dude. Happy 31 months. How do you get any title? You have to play in uh, FIDE rated tournaments. 
FIDE is a like the governing chess body, like the International Chess Federation. And when you do well in the tournaments, your rating goes up. To get the FM title, you need a rating of 2300. But then for IM and GM titles, you need you need norms, which are basically very good tournament performances. They're very difficult to get. Yeah, Wikipedia explains in much more detail. So White has to be careful here. A lot of things being pressured. Thank you, Sabiri, gifting to XBWFC. Has there ever been a case where someone got all norms in rating, but Fide denied the title? Probably. Sometimes norms like don't get approved due to some weird like technicality. But I think I can't think of a case off the top of my head. Okay, so this is interesting because d4 looks like a simple fork. But after d4, rook d3, I take and then take and then take and then take. And I actually lose material. And I don't know. don't think my pawn is actually promoting there. So bishop g5 is probably the simpler tactic. Simple skewer. Rook and queen aligned. Maybe later d4 will actually work. Yeah, before my IM title was approved, I actually had four IM norms, even though you only need three for the title. Uh, I played in those back-to-back tournaments, the Philly Open and the Chicago Open in 2015. And I had like very good performances in both. In Philly Open, I got my third norm. Chicago Open, I got a fourth norm. Almost got a Grandmaster norm that tournament. But missed it by half a point. Question from Wired Retro. In the line, oh, if, with Rooks, yeah, I, I think I saw Rook takes C2, but there was, oh, there wasn't Rook T7, because Rook C1. Yeah, maybe it was still winning. But this feels cleaner. I have a D. If D4 just wins a Rook, in D4 there's F4, there's also Rook d1 focus here a little bit rook d1 i'm trying to make it so i can win the clean thing but yeah let's just take I'm keeping things simple and pawn takes probably queen c7 Eyeing C2. Also eyeing this diagonal. Rook E4 might come soon. Like E3 is a weak point. Yeah, I like Rook E4. Basically an outpost square for the Rook. It's hard for the Knight to attack. As I do cover G3. And there's no pawns on these uh, neighboring files. So maybe now queen g3? If rook e1 looks like it defends this pawn, but allows rook takes b2. And then the queen's overworked. I think it's so easy for white to, to lose something here. This is probably the best try. Queen f2. Okay, so now I can take. And I'm threatening to take. I'm not sure if white could defend against that. Yeah, everything going in black's favor here. Pawns attacked. I'll just save it. Yeah, the goal is to win this pawn and then promote this pawn. Okay, pretty clean game. It started with one of these 
variations of Taimata where yeah, black got the center. And then it was a pretty simplified position, like right out of the opening. And then a lot of like natural moves, made some gradual improvements, and eventually white succumbed to the, the pressure. Probably rook e1 was better. And black's definitely for choice here. Wow, minus five. It's crazy to be minus five and not be up material. I guess white's position is just so difficult with the pressure on the C file and, and the diagonal. So after rookie three, yeah, D4 is also winning. This line takes, takes. Yeah, this would be winning because black is threatening rook C1. Although there is a move rook f1 here. Rook f1, rook c1, and then rook d7 is not winning for black. Reminds me of one of my games in uh, Qatar. I had the same same idea. Reverse colors. So if rook f1, then bishop d4 is like the only clean way to win. To play e5 and then rook c1. Okay, back to tournament. Eight games ongoing. How would you like to be? I am Lord Rosen. Uh, that would feel weird. Not sure what I need to do to get the Lord title. Have to get some Lord norms, I guess. Oh, did I just play chess, bro? I'll see you in real life soon. Yeah, good game. At least in the opening, I recommend... If you're playing open Sicilian and you encounter Taimanov, um, there's other ways to to meet this opening. Like Bishop e3, g3, and Bishop e2 are, I think, a bit more standard. f4 also a lot of playable moves for white. Recently in Qatar, I played this knight cb5. The idea to over defend the knight to play Bishop d3. And then in this position, there's different options too. Uh, probably the main alternative is knight b5 and then c4. And then white gets a Marazzi setup. Ooh. Interesting. When I'm watching games, I don't want to comment until like it's very clear. But uh, yeah, if white were to push the pawn, then it would be a draw. So white played very accurately to yeah get opposition first. So one more game going. Ooh, Emberg again is the final game. Black still has winning chances with a pawn, but it might be difficult. Good fight again. Playing a much higher rated opponent. Oh, thank you, Sad Rabbit. Good luck. Can we get a prediction if you win out? Prediction if I win out. I'm trying to understand what the request is. Like, have a prediction now or only after the tournament? Sure, I can I can do a channel point prediction. I have thirty seconds to make it. Uh what place will Eric finish? Yeah. Okay. I can't make the prediction. Uh First, second, third, or worse. Okay. Okay. I think I made the prediction. Playing is Nardo. Oh, thank you for the hype chat. Hey, Serginho. With, are those pounds or euros? For those unaware. Um, also, thank you, Gary, gifting. <laughs> A lot to internalize right now. I appreciate all the support. 
So with g6, I'll play this move h4. It's uh, somewhat of a sideline. An interesting sideline, though. And now d4. So I provoked h5, and one nice thing here is after bishop g5, this pawn can't go backwards. So this bishop is pretty solid. I played this line once, like over the board. There's a tournament in Romania. It's probably one of the last times I looked at this line. I remember there was some idea to bring the knight to f4. But it's a nice kind of development scheme. And if I really want to make things spicy, I could castle queenside. Yeah, there's options here. Not entirely sure what to do. Let's go for knight f4. Staying flexible on some ideas of knight d5. There's some other ideas which I will avoid mentioning because it's possible for black to make an oversight in this position. Yeah, black defended against my, my main threat. I was threatening to take the pawn because f7 is pinned. So this is kind of a weird formation but I don't think it's bad. It'd be bad if the pawn could move backwards. Oh, the bishop's very stable here. And it seems like maybe black wants to play f6 someday, but it's very hard to achieve that. Knight's in the way and the pawn is pinned. And any time I can play this and just the bishop has more squares. So going forward, there might be the idea of like castling and then f3, g4. Like I'm considering f3 immediately. Again, staying flexible. Thank you, Domination. Subbing for nine months. Okay, so there's knight d5. Other moves too. Welcome back, Fame Duster. A little bit conflicted here. I'm calculating knight d5 and then takes and then takes and then rook e8. I don't think I want to castle queen side. So I'm realizing black wants to play this, so maybe queen e2 is one way to go. Which not only covers c4, but it over defends f3. Because maybe there's some cases where like g4 and then sack and attack. I mean, with the queen on d2, there's ideas of like eventually playing bishop h6, but apart from that, I think the queen is maybe more useful on e2. Still not sure which way I want to castle. Really prolonging my decision. Fing Duster about 20, wait, 250,000 channel points, quarter million channel points on me. Wow. That's a lot of channel points. So much pressure now. Yeah, the prediction is over, but I think it's still possible to, uh, might still be possible to late join the tournament. This is round three. Opponent taking time. I'm actually not sure what to expect from black. If the queen moves, then maybe knight d5 would be more possible. We see b5. Now the question is, is this a free pawn? Queen a5, knight c3, rook c3, pawn c3, queen c3, king f2. I 
I really don't see anything wrong with taking it. Feels risky, but a pawn is a pawn. Uh, now I'm almost certainly not casting greenside, just with all the half open files for back. I think now the strategy is just to get my king safe. And if black sacks, then I'm going to lose casting rights because. In the event of takes, 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 I need to move my king to con connect the rooks. I'm just realizing this is a move, but then rook e3. I don't think that works for me. I hope I'm not missing anything. Sometimes hoping is not a great strategy. There is a line which I didn't fully consider, but I think it's still okay. This crazy move. Because if takes, takes, then my king's forced back and I lose a rook. But well, this move, I have this move. I think it's fine. Like, I do have to keep my rooks connected. And black is definitely playing in the style of the dragon. Like, it's a very thematic exchange sack. Should also note if this, I don't take back with pawn, which will allow knight g4, but I would just take back with queen. Okay, so here black is hoping for queen e3, after which knight g4. But I have king g3. So my pieces are looking a little bit ridiculous. A little bit diamond shaped. But the king seems safe here. Like the knights can't really do much to attack the king. Hey Eric. Hey, our Beasley, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Happy 44 months. Yeah, if you're just joining, this is game number three of the Rapid Swiss. Time control is seven plus two. I have not castled this game. Okay, this is a good sign. Black is giving me a tempo to do something. I mean, rook ad1 seems like the natural approach. Like getting the rook off the diagonal, getting tempo on the queen. And then I can probably tuck my king away. Have to watch out for this pin. Yeah, a move like queen d2, it seems like an attempt to simplify, but knight takes e4 is a pin plus fork. I would get port. I mean, I'm also considering just trading off my bishop. Because after takes, if the bishop takes, I have knight d5. The more I'm looking at that, the more I like it. Because, yeah, this d5 square is so valuable. And now there's no more, like, potential knight e4, knight g4, at least with the knight that no longer exists. If I can remove the bishop, then the king's just going to be much safer. It's possible that I was in trouble at some point. Like, if we go back a few moves, I'm, I'll, I'll be curious to analyze after the game if the engine will find anything. But I think the storm has passed. Take on f6, rook d5 probably coming, or rook, I mean, rook takes d6, or is queen c7 some small annoyance? Maybe queen d2, and then take with the queen. Yeah, just trying to keep things simple here. I 
Yes, with queen takes g6, I would allow queen e3. So let's start with queen d4. Not even giving black an option to attempt to make things spicy. And queen d6 coming soon. And now f6 is attacked. Also might be threatening f4. But f4 allows queen c3. What to do? Maybe just king h2. Sometimes in positions like this, I have a hard time deciding what to do. Rook d5 also. I'll play rook d5. Preparing rook c5. A queen here. Again, black wants to like wiggle their way in. And if queen b2, I play queen d4. Again, offering the queen trade and creating the battery. Okay, so I could take the bishop. I could also take the knight and then take the bishop. I'll take the knight first. Okay, interesting fights. It was scary for some moments there. I mean, Black played a very solid looking opening and then just went full aggro mode in the middle game, like starting with b5 and then rook c3. It was maybe a res result of like not knowing what else to do. Um, in hindsight, maybe Black should play a6, b5. Engine does like Black's position though. Thank you, Claw. Oh, B5 is, is the best move, actually. Okay. But one of the sharpest moves. An engine likes Knight H7, which it's a little bit hard to even consider because it doesn't really threaten F6. After this... Yeah, so this all turned out to be okay for white. Like the king, <laughs> the king was safe on g3. Engine suggesting a5 to try and trap the bishop. Knight e g4. Wait, is this playable? I would still play king g3 though. Maybe black could have made it even more spicy somehow. Okay, um, well, that's three games down. Three out of three. Seven games ongoing. Ooh, Obese Reese has a very interesting position. White's down a pawn, but check, or white's down a rook, I should say, but checkmates. Yeah, if king a6, maybe black is, should still be for choice. Well done, Obese Reese. Uh, some King Pawn endings. It looks like White is winning a couple of these. And so we can watch this one. We got Grosso Midope against Imamid. Im Black up a bishop and two pawns. Ooh. A 
This is actually getting interesting. Ooh. I think there was some lag there. Because White gained like five seconds after that move, but there was a two second increment. So much suspense. Yeah, so th this is a theoretically drawn position. Like once the rooks get traded, like as black, it should still be winning if you keep rooks on the board. But it's one of the few positions in chess where you're up a piece and a pawn and it's just drawn. Yeah, nice to see a stalemate. Okay. So there's six of us with three points. Oh, Beast Reese has paused. Does pausing, does pausing mean withdrawing? Oh, Beast Reese has to go, okay. Well, thanks for tuning, or thanks for joining the tournament. Maybe knocking out some other competition. Next game starting in just a moment. Playing chess. I was going to say chess video world, but chess fied world. We have a, a ready opening. A ready opening transposed into Queen's Pawn and Queen's Gambit. I have a Catalan. Queen c2. I feel like I should know what to do here. I. <laughs> Almost everyone plays bishop in g2. Maybe c5 is like the best approach just to put maximum pressure. b5 also interesting. Calculating an interesting line. I'm going to start with c5. Line I'm looking at is takes, 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 e5, knight moves, then either e4 or bishop e6. Mainly going for the early piece activity. I'm also just trying to slow down white's development now. Because in the main lines, white very quickly plays bishop g2, usually castles quickly. Here, it's already difficult to get these moves in quickly because I'm attacking the center. So imagine this tension will be relieved at some point. Welcome back, Andy is Yoda. Yeah, if you're just joining, this is round four out of seven of the Rapid Swiss. And we are seeing the central liquidation. White takes with queen. Yeah, which I'm not sure if I'm thrilled to see. Good take in bishop c5. Hmm. And queen c7 threatens a bishop, but then just bishop f4. Another idea is bishop d7 or knight d7 to then hit the queen next move and avoid the queen trade. Choices, choices. I think I'll play bishop d7. Wasn't sure there though. Cause knight c6 comes and then like queen b6, pieces will develop. Bishops maybe not the happiest. There's also an idea of eventually playing bishop c6. Not sure if that ever actually works in my favor. I'm also considering, imagine bishop g2, queen a5, bishop here, and then queen h5. That 
That might be a little bit too weird, even for me. Yeah, probably at some point I want to play pawn e5 if the queen like moves away from the center. Okay, that's a good sign. So pawn e5, there's also bishop c5. Bishop c5 first. Yeah, I want to castle quickly. e5 will come at some point. Considering e5, but then, okay, bishop here, h6, takes, takes, there's knight e4. Hmm. Considering h6, but then bishop f4. Not sure if I can get exactly what I want here. I have an idea. So after this, I play this. And if takes, I trade queens, take back with the pawn, accept double pawns, but then have the bishop pair. I mean, this is all assuming white plays this move. There's some other lines too, like here, here, there's, there's queen takes first. I think that will be okay. It's nice having the, the more advanced center pawn, like just controlling more space. Oh, is it too late to join now? Yeah, I forgot which round exactly the late joining ends. But yeah, it's probably over by now. So I think we're going to be having a way more like positional and strategic game going into the end game, assuming queens get traded. I guess it's possible I can play something like queen c2. And then I have to figure out how to deal with the threat of knight e4. Maybe just bishop e7. Okay, so up just over a minute. Yeah, and the initial idea is to take, because if I take with queen, there's knight e4. Queen e7, we trade. So this is really the way to preserve my bishop pair. Okay, solid formation. I mean, knight d6 is maybe playable. And then I'm probably defend. There's also cases where I, I lose b7, but then win back b2. If it's my move next, I'd like to try and contest the d-file. And then someday, like, expand f4, f5, e4. Realizing this rook, in, in some cases, is tied down to a2. So I has to figure out what to do here. Okay, so 96. Mainly focusing on rook d8. Whoa, it's Shiyakzu. Gifting 20 subs. Thanks so much. That's a lot of hype. I appreciate that. 
I, I do have to stay focused here. <laughs> Forget what I was saying. I was mainly looking at this line, knight uh or rook d8, knight b7, take, take, and then here. At the very least I win back the pawn. At the very most, I win back the pawn and another pawn and then checkmate. The stay focused bits. Thank you, Fing Duster. Thank you, Del Porte. Thanks again, Shiaksu. She Shiaksu. Sorry if I butchered the name. <laughs> I'm doing well on time. And pressure is on white. Like if knight b7, my next two moves are pretty easy. White's looking for ways probably to make use of this diagonal. But these moves I just take. This move. Worst case I take. Yeah, this could get very tricky actually. But white's getting very low on time. I was actually more scared of knight g5. So white's counterattacking my knight. I think it's simple as just to take and then take on b2. And these pawns are hit. F2 will be a target. So now I can use my sweet, sweet time. I kind of like rook a2 just to start. I'll keep an eye on the pawn. There's this move. Just king g7, just gradual improvements. Plan is to put the bishop on b6 eventually. Thanks for all the, the subs, first time subs. Appreciate it. Okay, my rook's attacked. So now rook. And rook d2 looks nice. Okay, so bishop e4, threatens mate and also threatens a knight. So this should be should be winning. Okay. Took some work there. Thank you, Gary. Wow, level six hype train. Thank you, Submarine Mike. Yeah, thank you, Andrew or Andre D and Pop Vegas. A couple new subs. Gary earning the 25k bits badge. Yeah, I'm actually curious, like this opening. Engine likes A6 or B5. A lot of playable moves for black though. C5 was up there. Engine says it's close to equal. Yeah, roughly equal, like even around here. Ah, apparently knight d5 is better for white. Which I missed. Threads the pawn and the fork. That would be a bit more uncomfortable. Yeah, time definitely helped. Like later on, white didn't quite have enough time to figure things out. 
four games ongoing. Likely playing Ocean Man next. Thank you, Everett Will. Another new sub at Tier 1. Which game to watch? This one looks interesting. Both players low on time. White has Queen for Rook and Knight. Queen for Rook, Knight, and Pawn. Box Rook is active. White is trying to open E file. Oh, nice move. E5 with a backward discovery attack. It's not over though. Never resign when you have a knight. Or when you have a rook. Okay, white lost back the rook. Probably should have played king d2. Ah, there, there goes a knight. So queen versus rook. Thank you, sad rabbit. Gifting to Lulu. I appreciate all the hype. So much generosity. Black is still fighting, turning into a, a race. Uh, two queens is probably going to be too much. Thank you, Manix, Manaxist, Manaxist. How do I say this name? Thanks for subbing for the first time with Prime. Okay, one game left. Oh, again, it's Emberg. An interesting position. Another case where one side has a queen. Here, black has rook, bishop. Hello. Two pass pawns, but white also has pass pawns. Hello to Parth Vias. Happy two months. Very interesting position here. Black has formed the cube. Wow, the queen is trapped. Look at this. The queen has no, no moves on the diagonals. That was a nice configuration. Like the g5 pawn played a role too. Nice game, Emberg. Yeah, doing well tonight. Gaining rating. Next game is starting soon. Oh, there was a comment to check the last game. See the nice move. This game? Of Ocean Man? Ocean Man was in trouble. Oh, queen takes g2. That's a nice move. Bishop g2 looks like, like a safe move for white, but it's crazy. Knight e3 is also playable. <laughs> nice move. Okay, so that's what I'm going to be up against for this next game. All right, here we go. What's your favorite non-dubious opening? This opening is not so dubious. Knight C3 Sicilian. Happy birthday. Thank you, it's that one, Evan. My birthday was only a couple months ago. Oh, okay, so this player plays a bit more bullet than blitz. Probably underrated and, and rapid. Opponent taking time. I've had this position a decent amount recently. Didn't I have this like the first the first game? My opponent played knight d4. We see e5, which I mean, the general rule is if black doesn't play knight d4, you just take it. And I'll probably go for f4. Yeah, f4. 
Looks solid. So I'd much prefer to develop the knight behind the f pawn to just have more pressure against e5, also later open the f file. I'm not too scared of queen h4 to have bishop g3. I may be a little bit scared of black's bishop pair. This position's opened up a little bit more. Trying to play some quick natural moves. One of the standard ideas is to maneuver the queen to the king side. Opponent debating probably how to develop the bishop. A few logical moves. And the one thing I like about this opening, it's like white's pieces all have nice harmony, pretty solid. Structure is very stable. But black applying pressure. Maybe I'll start with bishop e3, simply hitting the pawn. Considering this move, sometimes interesting to throw in. There's also this. Let's start with this. Yeah, queen e1 no longer really made sense because g3 and h4 are both uh, squares where the queen can be captured. So I kind of like the idea of trading bishops. Bishop h6, if possible. I'm also preparing rook a e1. Pawn f5. I think bishop h6 is still my choice. I mean, we're now in a position where black can capture multiple things, bishop, pawn, or knight, but everything's defended. Queen defends the bishop, e4 is defended. I don't think black's going to go for bishop takes c3. We might see f4, and then we trade and... I mean, then there's less pressure on e4, and maybe I go for e5. Yeah, this is interesting. Considering d4 here, just to focus in the center. So I have two knights against knight and bishop. Yeah, I think I'd rather steer the game towards an end game. Like this stuff is coming. And I'm looking for alternatives though, but not seeing anything super attractive. I guess e5, but problem with e5, it just gives away too many light squares. I'm not entirely sure what's happening in this, this line. I do have an isolated pawn, but knights are centralized. This knight is not so centralized. This pawn's attacked. If it moves, yeah, now I have the d5 square or the d6 square to maybe work with. Like this would get forked. And there's this maneuver to then pressure the pawn. Okay, threatening this. The threat is this, and then this, and then take, and then take, and then fork. So a6 doesn't work. I just miss, I just miss something. Somewhat simple. Ugh. Oops. Yeah, 
yeah, I saw, I even addressed like if bishop e6, I would play knight c7. But if bishop b7, I had the same idea, which would work the rook and the other fork. I mean, at least it's still a threat for next move. Essentially, I have two threats now. It's still an unfortunate miss. I played rook ad1 a little bit too quickly there. Opponent taking time. I mean, even if they get low on time, they're very capable of playing bullets, at least according to their rating. So do I have the same, the same idea? Knight c7. Of course, there's rook d1, but then I think I gotta go for it. Might not be winning anything, but this looks attractive. I mean, 96. Huh. It's still tricky. It's not so clear. Um, I think I'll still go for this. But I don't think I want to take the pawn. I think I'd rather go, go for rook d6. A nice thing about the configuration with knight here and rook here is the king's very stuck. G5, I have discoveries. The knight's also tied down to the f4 pawn. Maybe there's some g5 checkmate potential. That move I did not see. I think now I can take, take rook d6, knight d5, rook e6, rook e7. Uh, gets concrete. Oh, there's also knight f6. Hmm. That was a good move. And there's still this option. But then bishop c8. Hmm. Can I just take on f4? No. My wife got me oh no my queen shirt as a present. Hey, let's go. She's the best. Oh, nice to hear. Take. Taking doesn't work because bishop c8, man. I can see what to do here. Go back. Not what I wanted. Yeah. Let's go for this. That was frustrating. We're kind of just heading towards a draw. That's a surprise. 
Can be still playable though. A D five. Okay, up a pawn, should be winning. King here, it's a fork. I should play knight d3. Only got to F8. Yeah, now both these are tied down to other things. Okay, took a lot of work. Good game to my opponent. Um, I was probably the last game of the round. No, still a couple games going. Uh, I'm going to take a small break and I'll be back momentarily. Okay. I just accidentally broke my teapot. Like as I was leaving, I like brushed against the desk and the teapot fell over. It was just shattered into so many pieces. Oh no, my teapot. Oh, that's still... We'll have to clean up a little bit, but what to do? Uh, okay, in time for next game. Looks like I'm going to be playing Steven Willie. Uh, there's two more games? Yeah, this is round six. Oh, not playing Steven, playing this person. Wait, how did that work? Oh, there is one other person. I guess I didn't realize that. Well, good luck to my opponent from Japan. If the time ticks down to zero, I think <clears throat> I think their time would just start ticking. Let me switch the sound. Okay, knight d two. Um, knight d two is like a fancy Kali move order. I don't think I need to do anything too different. I'm curious about c5 here. Let's play c5. I mean, maybe white will take. Uh, I hope I'm not walking into like prep. But I think just, okay, e6, b4 here, c3. Take, take, and then b6. If knight b3, I could just take. Oh, 
Fallen's Fallen's probably still in prep. I have B6 here as well. Yeah, it's a weird transformation. Because it's a question, am I actually winning this pawn? Rook b1. And I do have to be careful of, like, if I move my bishop, then b7 happens. So I think queen e7 is probably the way to go. And then there's queen b3. Yeah, it's not so simple. I also have um, knight c6. Maybe a little bit better. But then a3, man. So how about I start with queen e7? Opponent blitzing. It's possible I've walked into some prep. Maybe c5 was not the best like practical decision. Knight c6. Yeah, so it takes and bishop b7. And what else to do? I can't allow black or can't allow white to play b7. So it's worth calculating bishop a3. But that doesn't work. Yeah, this could be a challenge. I am attacking the A-pawn, but... Oh, man. I do control A5, too. It's a very tricky situation. I'm trying to figure out if it makes sense to trade off my knight for the bishop. Also trying to figure out like, if it's even possible to win one of these pawns. Like maybe more likely I can win the A pawn in the event of like, knight d2 and then the queen somehow maneuvers to a5. Bishop b4. That's logical. Oh, still very tricky. Take, take. Calculating take twice on b4, knight c3, bishop b5, I take. Let's try that. So bishop b5 I take, and rook takes I win back the pawn. Pawn takes, at least the pawns are doubled. And actually in that line I have rook a1, so. Looks like I should be winning back a pawn here. But winning back the pawn only makes it equal material. White's probably gonna try and like double and um, maybe get a rook to c7. But it is a big accomplishment winning the A pawn. I guess if we think concretely, like the bishop develops, I take with the rook. And if we trade, then I'm going to win the pawn. Although, bishop d3, take, take, king e2, I can't take because rook b1. Okay, and this line, considering rook c8 here. And taking is also, I think, very reasonable. Yeah, probably just taking. Rook c8 can come later. 
I burned a lot of time early in this game. And this is the first game I'm significantly down on time. Okay, so let's bring the knight back. Rook a2, taking is an option. Rook c8. Shuku Komi beat hurt me in game to make them suffer. Ah. <laughs> Just for you, Mr. Patu. I'm getting slightly hurt too, but maybe not overly hurt. Some idea to expand in the center. Yeah, I was thinking white wants to do this, so better to have my king a bit more centralized. Not scared of this, g6. And there is knight c7. But then I do think, oh, knight a7. Knight a7 kind of missed. It's slightly annoying. I have this move. And the whole game basically revolves around the situation on the queen side with this pawn. Pawn's blockaded. It looks like a strength, but maybe long term could be a weakness. D4 idea. Probably not right away. Because I have this move. Thinking rook d6 first. And tickle the pawn. Also preventing any bishop c6 or knight c6. I probably want to play rook b8 at some point. Time is getting closer. I'm down about 40 seconds. Having a hard time like anticipating what's coming next. So maybe why white's taking a long time. Like, not sure what to do. Up on time. And this is a threat, so white has to probably move this thing. Unless they want to counterattack, but then I check and then win the thing. Okay, rook b8. So now if rook here, I take, and then after king takes, I check and then win the pawn. And knight goes back, I win the pawn. I'm wondering if this makes any sense. I add another attacker. Now up over a minute. Play hmm. E5. I'm actually not sure what to do. Maybe H5. Okay. 
Okay. Bishop a6 is logical. I might as well like improve the rook, improve the bishop. Why not? Okay, now I can take. Am I winning a pawn? I think I'm winning a pawn. Oh, wait a minute. Ah, just overlooked that. Wow. There, you have six. That's not good. Take, take. Okay, got to hunker down. It's not pleasant. Maybe it's holdable. I'm, I'm not winning this, though. I miss bishop c4. Somehow I think I'm winning this. Okay. Wow. Uh I just had to keep playing despite I mean even when I took on B6, I was like trying to be extra sure there were no tactics. I just missed knight c6. I should have taken with this rook, I guess. Right? Yeah. I took with the wrong rook. Thank you, Submarine Mike. I don't think there's much time. And that was a long game. Yeah, next game starts in less than 30 seconds. No, knight c8, bishop takes c8. So I think everything was under control there. I mean, there is this line, knight c8, but this is what I wanted, like just being up a pawn. 
And you Euro Swiss. Okay. Playing Stephen Willie. I think Stephen usually plays this um, Alapin variation. Yeah, I think we'll repeat one of our previous games. Well done. Oh, thank you. Yeah, bishop g5. Pretty sure f6 is a move. Queen b6 also looks playable. I actually don't remember the theory here. Maybe f6 isn't necessary. Bishop c4, yeah. Probably too risky to take. Big dog Eric Wolf, Wolf, the Wu. Wolf, Wolf. I just go wrong already. There, there. I may have already gone wrong here, like, amazingly enough. Play bishop e7. Might have a longer like positional grind. And if white takes, it does concede the bishop pair. At the same time, it's um, yeah, probably slightly better for white. Thank you, Claglius. Thank you, Tori Yamazaki. Have to be very tactically alert. Sixteen month sub anniversary. Good luck of fun. Thank you, Birds Philly. Yeah, this is a small issue. I can't take because I get mated. I think F6 is maybe forced here. I'm curious about sacking though. I'm probably no good, but there takes takes there there. Yeah, the casting almost works. Uh, do I really want to play off six? I guess I do. And try and weather the storm. I have the bishop here. This move, this move. Maybe this move even. It looks so passive. Like, looks so sad that I've committed to f6, I've moved my queen back to the starting square. But if I can castle, I'll be grateful. It's the small things in life. I mean, white's taking time to try and figure out how to punish my <laughs> very dubious setup. Not super simple, though. Okay, feeling more grateful. I 
C4 is a small concern, but does allow for bishop e4 check. Maybe something like bishop g4. Although h3 and yeah, I have to cover e6. So there's this move too, which also doesn't look super appetizing. Queen e8. I'll go for queen e8. Chestnut live. Thanks for the raid. If you're just joining, uh, I'm playing the final round of this rapid Swiss tournament. This is a first place match. I'm currently in first, but having a difficult game so far playing Stephen Willie. Shout out to Zach, aka the chess nerd. Hope you had a good stream. Yeah, so also if you're just joining, I had a pretty bad opening. This came from an Alapin Sicilian. White wants to fork me now. But just trying to stay alive. Queen f7, knight here. Oh, knight b5 is actually very strong. Do I have a queen g6? I probably just abandoned the pawn. With how to do this. I could play maybe queen d8. Queen d8 c4. Ugh. Another raid from Anita. Thank you, Anita. Again, if you're just joining, it's uh it's not a happy situation here. But trying to be grateful for what I have. Maybe I go for there, there. Let's go for this. I have an idea. Not sure if it's a good idea, but it's at least an idea. The idea is to sacrifice a rook here and then here. I'm going for it. Oh no, my rook. So now I can take on f3. I'm losing a pawn in this line, but I don't think it's like so bad. Because white's going to wind up with double pawns. Wow, g takes, really? I have queen f7. I don't think I want to throw in the check because king h1, but queen f7... Now the knight's tied down to this rook. I mean, there is this move, but then I save my rook. Yeah, like rook d7, maybe rook d8. I'm grateful to only be down the pawn. I feel like it could have been much worse. And there is counterplay. Like, white's pieces are a little bit awkward now. Queen here, then knight e5. That does set up queen e6.
And rook to e8 might be simpler. I wasn't sure about rook c8, rook d7. Mm -hmm. Take and then bishop d8. I forgot there's this move. But then, okay, life goes on. I'm threatening to take and take. And there's two attackers now as well. If queen e6 takes, 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 defends. If knight e6, I play rook e8 and pin. Again, there's two attackers. There is a line here, takes. And then take, and then take, and then take, and then here. Not sure. Oh, I have I had queen g6 in that line. I have a feeling I'm gonna have rook d8 in this line. Oh, but then it's still tricky, man. Wait, I can take and go for this. I have uh, a lot of material for the queen. Yeah, I think this is safest, unless I'm missing something. Initially, I thought rook d8, but it doesn't win anything. Queen g6 doesn't do anything. Okay, here we go. So nice thing is the pieces are pretty coordinated. Ah, queen c8's an idea, but I have g5 here. Yeah, so the king defends the rook, defends the pawn, defends the bishop, defends or defends the other pawn, defends the bishop. Rook also defends this, which defends this. So everything's defended in one way or another. Probably want to play knight e5 next move. We can gradually make progress. I mean, sometimes uh, the way to win these positions when you have two miners and a rook for the queen is just to create a mating net. So, like, I already have the nice harmony. I guess I should be moving faster here. I move around to gain some time. I like the knight here, keeps my king safe. Also watches h6. Well, what am I doing? Hmm. Still tricky.
Ah, I flagged. Ah. Oh, is it? It might be losing though. It might be losing. Because Queen G8's coming. I wasted so much time allowing the pawns to expand. That was a good fight from White, though. Like, somehow... Yeah, this is not a good situation with Queen G8 looming. <laughs> My rook ran out of squares. So I think that's the tournament. So it's never completely winning for Black. Wow. Except maybe here. Yeah, I guess I should have gone for King H6 sooner. Well, good job to Steven. Thank you, Theodore Who, gifting to respectable name. Yeah, like gradually got not so simple. And then here, that white's already better. That's crazy. Oh, no, your channel points. Yeah. So earlier, yeah, opening was bad for me, but knight c7 apparently was a mistake. And then, yeah, I think we both made mistakes like in the early middle game here. Apparently, I missed bishop d6, knight a8. Ah, bishop h2. Ooh. I should have seen bishop d6. I guess I have to see the next move as well. Okay, is the tournament over? Tournament is over. I finished in second, which was one of the prediction options. Only a few people get rewarded. I guess these were the results. Looks like it was already already rewarded, though. So 15 people. 15 people? Wait. Ah, it's Fang Duster's channel points. I see. Okay. Um, I'm running late for dinner plans. So it was a fun tournament. Uh, thanks, everyone, for playing and watching. I appreciate the support as usual. Good job again to Stephen Willie. Thanks to all 118 people. It kind of turned into a viewer tournament, I think. Um, I'll be back probably tomorrow for Title Tuesday. I've been grinding some Blitz off stream. So, um, I'm like close to my chess.com peak rating. I'll see if I can hit it tomorrow for Title Tuesday. Oh yeah, I'll check Discord later. Yeah, thank you, Pablo. Thanks everyone for being here. Uh, let's send some love somewhere. Let's send it to Elena. I think I've rated her in a while. Okay. Uh, I'll be back soon. Adios.